wrapping us up here, the game that we want to see the most this year, the game to watch, and Pat, I'm going to let you start. Yeah, I'm going to start with the obvious answer. It's October 8th. It's Texas A&M at Alabama. One versus six. And after the Jimbo Fisher, Nick Saban firestorm in the media this offseason, I mean, that just has every narrative under the sun. I, I'm going to have to watch that one. Interesting that you went with that one and not another Texas team facing Alabama. No, I, uh, I'm i here for the goss. I'm here that's, for the that's, drama. That's going to be a bloodbath. Right I'm here for the house of highlights. I want... I'm an NBA guy. I the want beef, the drama. The beef. It's no, I, I, I get it. I get it. And that's the one. Kyle. All-time press conference, for sure. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, my game to watch this year is going to be Texas A&M versus UMass. <laughs> <laughs> Bringing that up again. I can, I cannot. I can. I cannot I believe to Rutgers Boston College. We I cannot. <laughs> but I didn't know that was on the schedule. I cannot believe that that is a game that is scheduled for this year. That is going to be that. That's going to be ninety nine to nothing. Oh my lord! Uh, but no, that's not my actual choice. Do we know um, what the spread is on that game? Uh, I, all I saw is that ESPN said that uh, UMass has a one point three percent chance of winning, which I thought was very generous. Ooh, so. um, no, my, my two actual games to watch this year are somewhat biased, but I think Oklahoma to Texas is going to be fun this year because both these programs are in kind of a an interesting limbo. And especially normally when they face each other, it's early on in the year and one of them's like maybe four and one, the other's five and oh. And, and if and if that's the case, or if maybe they're both undefeated at that point, like well, I guess they won't be. Texas is going to have one loss because they're going to lose week one. I mean, even even if I was a Texas fan, I would be saying they're going to lose week is one. Is it week one or week so, two? So, you know, five and because they play, it's, it was not, week it's, one. Not, it's not this coming week. Texas and Alabama play the next week. Okay, so so week two then. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, it could be 5-0 and o versus 4-1, and one, which, you know, that's pretty big stakes because, you know, Oklahoma would need to theoretically keep their undefeated record alive if they want to stay in the playoff hunts. And, you know, a big win for, you know, losing to Alabama isn't necessarily the most shameful thing in the world. So if Texas are four and one and they can knock off Oklahoma that will help them if they're trying to make a push for the playoffs so I think that will be an important one and then in a very similar vein I think uh if if Utah and Oregon play each other this year in the final I think that would be that that would be an amazing uh that would be an amazing game to watch because I think that both those programs if they get to that stage they'll have a lot to play for and I think that theoretically if if Oregon let's say play a close game against Georgia and then make the final after winning out and you know utah are undefeated at that point like i think the winner of that game could theoretically be in the uh would be in the play would be in the playoff and it would be big for the pac-12 so you know those are my two davis um to close the year on november 26th i'm looking at usc and notre dame that is one of the most iconic rivalries in college football Neither of those teams have been able to stay good at the same time in over a decade. So I'm really looking forward to both those teams going at it. You know, I think collectively, those are two they both programs. Have three losses. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who knows? But I, I just think collectively, those are two schools that the four of us all, I'm pretty sure, we don't really like. No. But nope. I think when those schools nah. are, as much as I hate to say it, when USC and Notre Dame are good, college football is better. Those are just iconic programs. So I'm really hoping that at least they can stay like nine and two heading into that, that game because that would be a lot of fun. Yes, Kyle. I disagree. <laughs> I like when they're both bad. <laughs> Do you notice that? I'm sorry. Now I'm going down a Notre Dame hole again. You notice that anybody who roots for Notre Dame just never went to the school. It's not like they know anybody that went to the school. They're just Notre Dame fans because it's Notre Dame, and it's like, dude, you guys. Because yeah, like grandpa was Irish. I, I guess. You I guys also stink. I do kind of like a. Uh... I do kind of like the energy of Notre Dame facing BYU this year in a, in a nice Holy War matchup. Yeah, loser has to like completely leave their religion. Loser, I, has I was to gonna convert. say has to I'm, has to take the Crusades path, but isn't allowed to kill anybody and see if they survive. <laughs> I'm I'm bummed because you know this year I'm really high on both Utah and BYU, and of course the Holy War, the actual rivalry, the Holy War doesn't happen this year. Yeah, it's not is on that, the schedule, and I'm bummed. That's a real shame. Is that like not a th- is that not a thing they do every year? I, I thought it was, but they're not on each other's schedules. You know, I was putting together BYU. Like, Man, look at that resume they could have. But Utah-BYU do not match up this year. 
Uh, I'm going to say, Davis, though, your your earlier chat now has me really rooting that BYU are undefeated by the end of this year. Because I just like – because like, cause, cause think about how we've talked about all this chaos that's been going on that could theoretically be happening. And after the offseason that, that we just had, like, wouldn't that not just, like, be perfect? It would be. I mean, just and, and then wa- and then watch them just get absolutely thumped by Alabama in the first round, obviously. <laughs> but you know, but you know, yeah, I mean, it's going to happen to anybody, though. Season. It doesn't matter what team you insert there. No, it's true. Hey, I mean, well, Cincinnati didn't necessarily get thumped last year. I mean, their yeah. offense got thumped, but their defense put up a pretty good fight. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm just imagining the outrage, though. You know, you take you take let's say BYU goes 11 and one. It's a close loss at Oregon. And they're up against like a ten and two Georgia who lost the SEC title game, and they put they played in like a Georgia over a BYU, mm-hmm. like the collective just chaos that fans would have. It, it, it would be a meltdown. But. And then I'm thinking Ohio State loses to Minnesota in the Big Ten title game, and so then they're <laughs> up in the edge. Oh, like chaos. An undefeated Minnesota, but a one loss. We want we want Bama BYU. Uh, Minnesota and NC State. Yes, sir. <laughs> all, Jesus. all, all of which are undefeated teams, and Alabama just goes okay. It's Ben Rice Young for the first yeah. game. We'll see what happens in the, in the Alabama. Final. Uh, Alabama just gets there like they're just feeding those teams into the sausage maker. Just <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, my game to watch is um, a game that is simply called the game. It's in the shoe this year. Michigan and Ohio State at the end of the year, as good as last year's was, because it was the first time that Khakis has actually won one of those, makes the stakes for this year that much more interesting for me. Um, I know that there's going to be a lot of hate going back and forth, and obviously after Haskins had like seven touchdowns in that in that game last year, we'll see what happens this year. Uh, as I think me and Davis said, this Michigan offense is going to be loaded. Um but Ohio State's offense is going to be equally as disgusting uh, with higher higher end talent. But if both of these teams come into this matchup undefeated, which they could, can you imagine just because it, that's also the one that starts your rivalry weekend? You you watch this is this is um yeah so it's going to be this Thanksgiving night is going to be the Bills Bills and Cowboys or something like that and Patriots are going to play the Vikings. Friday is going to be USA England World Cup Black Friday matchup. Saturday uh, oh, you're yeah. going to start with Michigan, Ohio State could both be undefeated, transition into the Iron Bowl and then have another game at night. That 3-day stretch is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Look, I think it's Cowboys. And you're going to be working through all of it. <laughs> I think I'm going to I'm hopefully going to get Thanksgiving off. I'm praying. I'm praying because I know that I'm automatically on Black Friday. I already figured that out. I'm praying that I get that off, but we'll see. Um, anyway, I, I like I like Michigan and Ohio State. Texas Bama for the eyeballs is going to be good. The game's not going to be that good, but I will say if Texas keeps it close and somehow hits the ceiling of what they're supposed to do, which is like a ten win season and has a close loss to Alabama on there, people will start to make the argument, and we're not going to want to hear it, but they will. Um, and then the other one that I'm looking forward to purely for selfish reason reasons, week one. I want to see Ohio State take Notre Dame to the woodshed, please. Just beat the ever-loving crap out of them, I beg. I have uh, one other one to add to the list, and it's kind of outside the box. And, on, I mean, not necessarily game to watch, like, you know, for how exciting it might be, but game to watch possibly in person. That could be fun. The Army-Navy game is going to be at Gillette this year. Are you going so to that? That could be pretty fun. Uh, I'm, theoretically, I probably have a good chance of having a – Having a, a I think it would be really fun. That's definitely a bucket list one. The Army Navy game. I went to it last year. It was it was really fun, and you know it's it's happening here in Foxborough this year. So you know if you know Davis, it might be kind of hard for you, but you know for yeah. for us Boston folks, you know it's it, if you have a chance to go, I would definitely say go. It's 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 a very unique experience. All right. Any other final thoughts here? As the season well, week zero has already happened, but we're really getting into the weeds here. Week one coming up. Big rivalry matchups. Utah and Florida, also an underrated one, depending on if Anthony Richardson can actually play. Um, and obviously we talked about Oregon and Georgia. Week one is just going to be great. It really is because it's going to be hey. it's going to feel nice. I've been waiting for pro football. Any so, so Not pro football. I've been waiting for football, organized football, to come back for a while now. Doing these nights after nights of just MLB stuff has been really grating, so I'm happy that this stuff is back. Hey, Dark Horse, uh, Dark Horse candidate this year, 
really impressed with them in week zero. Vandy. On top of the SEC. <laughs> against the against, against what is expected to be the worst Hawaii team in history. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, they they, they, they dropped the they, was they, it a 60 burger on them or uh, 56 at least. Either way, I, I, Davis, you have to put into the fact that they, they endured that grueling travel. They played in terrible conditions out in Hawaii. That's, that should add to their resume for sure. All right. So and with that, uh, I, do, I do believe that their Vandy's new coach did say this is the best Vanderbilt team that's ever of all time, and they immediately went out and steamrolled someone. So whoa. They did drop a 60 burger, 63 to 10. Get on the train or get off. Get they nervous, guys. As, uh, Vanderbilt's Rutgers no longer a baseball the school. Four games this year. They're going to be the new Minnesota. Rutgers Ooh. lose four games this year, and then they're going to be hot next year. I like it. All right. So Cheers. thank you guys for listening in, and uh, thank you guys for appearing on this. Hopefully we can do maybe something before bowl season. We'll see how it all works out. But for Kyle, Pat, and Davis, I am Jeremy saying have a good rest of your day, everybody.